Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson. I'm a wildlife photographer. Earlier in the week we did a video about the construction of a traveling trailer or a gypsy wagon that I'm currently manufacturing. And the reason for this wagon is to have a place to stay as I travel on the road from location to location. I'm currently writing a couple of books. Two of them are about the Yellowstone and Teton area and a third one is about the wildlife in the state of Florida. And these books require an extensive amount of travel from location to location as I try to document the wildlife that is found in these areas. And that is the reason that I am building this travel trailer or gypsy wagon type trailer. I previously did a video about how to select a trailer in order to have a traveling platform for either your tiny house or your traveling trailer. And I will link that up here in the corner. And I also earlier this week did a video about the initial stage of construction of this traveling trailer that I'm making. And I'll also link that up here in the corner. Today we're doing part two of the series of actually constructing our traveling trailer. And in this part, we're going to put up the main structure and do part of the electrical, frame in the windows and things like that. I'm not actually going to give you any measurements because each trailer that is built is going to be very specific for the actual trailer that you have. My particular trailer is four foot by eight foot long. And so that's going to be the size of, of, of my traveling trailer. And I'm extending the sides out a bit. And so that will give me an interior volume of six foot by eight foot. Shown in this picture is a picture of the framing. And you can see that there's an initial box on the bottom, which I went through the construction of this during part one of this video series. And now we're constructing the frame that goes up on top of this box. And you can see that we have these wings that are supported by the brackets. And then the house is built out on top of these horizontal pieces of three quarter inch plywood. One of the first things that we needed to do was to make sure that these brackets that are attached to the side were very well attached. I initially attached them with three inch screws, but then I decided that probably wasn't going to be strong enough. And so I went and got some lag bolts that were three inches long and three eighths of an inch in diameter. And I drilled a couple of pilot holes and I attached these two of them per bracket. So I have four brackets on each side or eight brackets total. And so that came out to be a total of 16 lag bolts. In addition to that, it was important to secure the box to the actual trailer. And I got some carriage bolts for that. And I drilled a couple of holes in the forward part of the trailer and a couple of holes in the aft part of the trailer. And I, inserted these carriage bolts and then bolted through the bottom of the trailer to secure the box securely to the trailer itself. 
Another important consideration is the wiring that you're going to run inside your travel trailer in order to power your fans, your interior lights, and any other type of electrical appliances that you're going to have in your trailer. And it's essential that you plan this out prior to actually insulating your travel trailer so that you're able to stick this hidden inside the walls. Now, some people may choose to have the wiring on the exterior of the interior walls, and that is an acceptable compromise too. What I did, I used standard extension cords, and I cut these extension cords, and then I placed them inside the trailer. The green extension cord is 16 gauge wires, and I'm using that for my 12 volt. And the red wire that you see in the wall here, I'm using that for my 120 volt. After I ran the wires for both the 120 volt and the 12 volt, then I insulated the walls and I used extruded styrofoam insulation, inch and a half. It has an R value of R5 per inch. And since the wall thickness is an inch and a half, that will give me an R value of seven and a half. Next, it was time to start installing the siding on the exterior of the structure. And I'm using tongue and groove pine to sheath the outside of the structure. Once we get the entire exterior finished, I will be painting this pine. Pine is not as durable as is cedar. And so I'm going to paint the pine. In the past, when I built tiny houses, I put cedar on the exterior and I coated the, cer the cedar with polyurethane. But this time I'm using pine because it's much more economical and I think it will hold up just fine with a coating of exterior paint. In this image, you can see the opening for the door and my door is offset towards one side. And the reason for this offset is I'm going to have a shower directly inside the front door and towards the passenger side of the vehicle. And so the door needs to be offset in order to provide enough room for the shower that is inside the structure. In this image, you can see that more sheathing has been applied. And this image shows an opening for one of the windows. This is the window on the passenger side of the vehicle. And this next image shows two windows on the driver's side. The reason the passenger side only has one window is I plan to have a desk inside my traveling trailer. And over my desk, I will have a 27 inch high quality monitor for my photography work. And I don't want to have a window directly behind my monitor. So that's the reason there's only one window on the passenger side. This image is looking from the door towards the front of the trailer. And you can see one of the windows on the floor that has not been installed. These are shed type windows or playhouse windows. They're relatively cheap windows, but they are constructed of safety glass or tempered glass. So in case they break, they will not break into large pieces. They will break into tiny pieces that are relatively safe. And this next image is an image from inside the trailer looking out the front door. This image shows the insulation that is installed in the floor, and it also shows the insulation that is installed in the shell of the box. And you can also see a lot of the electrical wiring that's kind of hanging free 
and just waiting to be hooked up to the various outlets and whatnot. I have not installed the electrical boxes yet. That will be coming soon. And this is a bird's eye view looking down from overhead. The roof has not been installed, but you can see that the walls are installed. And this kind of gives you an overview of what it looks like from above. I got a little carried away installing electrical boxes. I'm not quite sure why I thought I needed five electrical boxes in a place that is only eight foot long. But I have one adjacent to the desk, one adjacent to the bed, another one on the other side of the bed, and two in the kitchen area. So I'll have plenty of electrical boxes. These will all route directly to an inverter and the inverter will go to a battery after it goes through a fuse panel. The next job was to start on the roof. And you can see in this particular image, there are two beams on either side that extend out from the aft end a bit and this will give me a slight porch that will be roughly 10 inches over the door so that if it's raining outside I'll be able to leave my door open and not have the rain pour into my house. I'm expecting on occasion to be in locations that are hot and so I'm trying to set the house up so that I can get the maximum amount of ventilation. In this next picture, you can see the cutouts near the roof line. And this is where I will have the center beam and the two side beams. And these will support the roof that goes all the way across these beams. My plan is to put plywood up on top of the roof and then to cover this plywood with uh, an ice and water shield type product and then over the top of the ice and water shield to put metal roofing. And this final image, my buddy that's helping me build this, Gary, is holding up one of the windows just to show the placement of the window. The window needs to have flashing installed prior to installing the actual window, but this at least gives you an idea of where the windows will go. In part three, we will cover more of the roof and the installation of the windows, plus some other items, and that will be coming in a few days. We are so far on day three and a half of our build. So we have made a significant amount of progress in a very short span of time. I'm expecting the total build, build progress to take approximately two weeks. And uh, then I need to get on the road and continue my photography. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you would hit the like icon and please consider subscribing to our channel so that you can keep track of our, our build as it continues.